Uh, thank you so much again. And I welcome uh, all distinguished fellows and uh, uh, who joined this uh, meeting uh, from uh, abroad uh, as well as from our country uh, to my talk on understanding molecular plant microbe interactions for biorational management of plant health. Actually, I have been working uh, on uh, this area as well as other areas since 1997. Uh, so it was a bit uh, complicated for me to uh, choose a topic for this academy lecture. Uh, uh, we all know that uh, medicine can cure uh, us uh, one day, but plants save uh, our life every day. This is why uh, plant health is considered the uh, art's wealth. And uh, it is uh, a statement uh, given by American Phytopathological Society a couple of years ago. And plant health is critical for the health of all biomes on the earth. So uh, uh, today I will focus on uh, uh, my study related to plant health. There are some uh, terms I used. Uh, you all know that plant, uh, a eukaryotic photosynthetic organism uh, uh, only uh, in the earth which can transfer uh, photon energy from the uh, sun uh, into chemical energy and we all share uh, those energy from uh, for our survival on this earth microbes prokaryotic and eukaryotic microorganism uh, which are mainly associated with uh, the plant is my subject area Molecular interactions, interaction by a small, large molecule, and biorational another term uh, is natural uh, or uh, naturally derived materials which we use uh, for the benefit of human. They are uh, not harmful for the uh, environment or human health. Uh, before I start my academic talk. Uh, I would like to express my profound gratitude to some of the uh, great uh, uh, scholars who uh, trained me and supported me to be here uh, uh, as a, a fellow. Uh, Professor Satoshi Tahara, he was my master's PhD and postdoctoral supervisor at Hokkaido University. Uh, Professor Dr. Hashiduku, uh, he expired uh, two years uh, ago and he was my uh, postdoctoral uh, supervisor. Uh, Dr. Andreas von Tiedemann, he was the host of my, uh, from uh, University of Göttingen, host of my Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship. Um, Professor Michelle Clark, uh, uh, she was the host of my Commonwealth Academic Fellowship and Daniel Penasion and Dr. Mahfuz, uh, they are host of my uh, uh, Fulbright Visiting Scholar Program. And my two uh, very outstanding uh, collaborators, uh, Middle uh, Nick uh, Talbot and uh, the right side, Sufyan Kamon, they are the fellows of uh, Royal Society and they visited Bangladesh and they are uh, significantly contributing uh, to my team on fighting against the wheat blast. Uh, today, my talk uh, is divided into three uh, uh, parts. First part, I uh, I'll, uh, try to highlight some of our findings on signaling and communications between plant and Peronospurumycete or Umycete phyto phytopathogens. What are Peronospurumycete and Umycete? I shall share with you later on. And plant beneficial interactions, be plant beneficial bacteria interactions and their uses in crop production and bioprospecting would be the second part of my talk. <laughs> Last part, genomics analysis of plant microbe interactions and biotechnological biotechn application of the knowledge uh, for durable management of uh, plant health. Uh, here you can see a, a simple illustration that a plant uh, is uh, in the middle and uh, you can see in the rhizosphere, that means road zone, there are lots of microorganisms uh, inhabit there and there are some weed and uh, parasitic uh, plants. So uh, uh, around the plant, uh, 
there are lots of organisms are we can see because plants are the only organisms which can uh, uh, you know trap uh, solar energy and convert into chemical energy so for the source of energy all organisms not only uh, the microorganisms parasitic weeds and weeds but also uh, herbivores a uh, big term human animal insects and other microorganisms they are also um, uh, you know um, close to uh, the plant and get uh, the energy from the plant and some of the uh, organ most of the organisms associated with the plant especially microorganisms 99 percent of them are beneficial some of them are also living yeah. in the internal yeah, yeah. Tissue of the plant, I was which, talking to guy about this uh, which we called so epiphyte and endophyte they are bacteria archaea yeah. fungi and yeah. viruses and today uh, I shall talk on uh, plant oomycete interaction, plant fungi interaction, and interaction of plants with the bacteria. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, simple uh, graph uh, uh, in a review published in Nature showed that fun uh, plant infecting fungi is increasing dramatically in uh, last four decades and even fourfold increased. Although we are using many agrochemicals, even though 15% of our pre-harvest yield are lost by the uh, different, uh, you know, uh, disease. Uh, 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 in the plant. Uh, emerging pl uh, plant diseases uh, mm -hmm. is uh, directly related to the food security because uh, uh, world population is increasing very fast. And it is uh, estimated that the, by 2050, world population would be nearly 10 billion. And to keep up with the pace of population growth and uh, food production will need to be increased by 70 to 100 percent by 200, uh, 2050. Uh, to uh, have a well-fed world population. And emerging fungal uh, uh, and oomycete diseases are seriously uh, a big threat for the uh, food security. In the world history, we can see Irish potato famine in the 19th century, uh, as well as uh, several other you know, catastrophic attack of uh, uh, plant diseases uh, in the human history is unprecedented. For example, Irish potato famine due to late blight disease in consecutive years from 1943 to 1946 uh, caused one million people uh, died due to starvation in Ireland and more than 1 million people migrated, which is called the Great Irish pot, uh, Potato Famine. Uh, there are Plant diseases are still a big problem. For example, rice blast, uh, wheat rust, and now wheat blast. So now I am uh, trying to show some of the highlights of my work on uh, the part one. Uh, I told you the Perunospurumycete. Perunospurumycete may not familiar to you. Uh, why Perunospurumycete plant <coughs> interaction is important? Please let me show you some of the uh, information. They are that a destructive, uh, uh, you know, uh, pathogen of uh, uh, a different. Uh, plants, animals, fishes, and humans, and they are terrestrial and yes, aquatic uh, microorganisms uh, resemble uh, fungi. Uh, Originally, uh, they are, we thought them they are fungi, but they are belong to the kingdom of Staminopila. And, uh, 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 in the history, uh, human history, late diet of potato, as I mentioned, which caused Irish potato famine, uh, uh, phytophthora infestants, uh, the meaning is destroyer of plant, uh, that, uh, that is a peronospurumycity. Uh, sudden oak death caused by phytophthora remoram in uh, USA uh, devastated the oak forest, and they are also serious pathogen of uh, fishes, fish ulcerative uh, uh, disease. You know, many fishes are inundated in uh, European uh, rivers like crayfish, and some of them are also pathogenic to human and animals. So they are uh, uh, obviously, uh, you cannot find any plant in the earth which are not uh, susceptible to uh, the Peronospor poromycetes, uh, fungus-like organisms. So uh, they have the, uh, a characteristic phenomena that they infect the plant by using a motile juice pool, a sexually produced motile juice pool. Uh, this juice pool picture uh, taken by uh, 
scanning electron micrograph when I was in Sapporo. And Juspur has, you see, very complex uh, two flagella, one flagella used for swimming and another flagella for using uh, steering. And all the peronosporomycetes use this asexual uh, Juspur and they are naked cell, not only membrane bound, no cell wall. This is why Juspur is considered one of the weakest point of the peronosporomycetes. If we can somehow stop the motility of Juspur, uh, then then we can stop the disease. Uh, here uh, you can see the life cycle of uh, uh, one juice phytopathogen, Aphanomyces coploides, which cause disease in sugar beet, spinach, and some other member of members of the MRNTSA and Canopodiaceae. Here you see Juspur uh, released from the sporangia, from mycelia to sporangia, and then and they swim and find the host through chemotaxis. Chemotaxis means preferential movement of juice food to the chemical source, chemical source, chemical released from the host root. And uh, then a juice food land on the uh, root surface and shed the flagella, remove the flagella, and then become cystospore and germinate and then penetrate and cause the disease. So our target research was uh, to know, understand the chemotactic signal uh, as well as to understand and how Juspur morphologically, uh, you know, trans, uh, you know, uh, uh, change. Uh, that means uh, 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 morphologically uh, transition of the Juspur to the cystospore and hyphal germ to you. Uh, to get the, you know, uh, chemotactic signal because it is a root pathogen. It is difficult to, uh, uh, you know. Uh, discover the compound. So we devised a very simple method called particle method. These are the silic particle. Uh, you extract the plant root and uh, in ethyl acetate and drop the uh, uh, ethyl acetate solution on the particle. These are porous particle people use for gas chromatography. And if you keep uh, on the uh, air, uh, ethyl acetate is volatile uh, and uh, they evaporate very quickly and excess uh, ethyl acetate you can uh, you know, absorb by the filter paper and air dry and if you drop the particle they are porous they float uh, you know on the uh, uh, submerged on the juice pool suspension and juice pool if uh, uh, and this uh, particle act like a, a dummy of root so it uh, uh, a, a, you know, the chemical uh, produce a gradient around the particle and then Juspur can sense because Juspur has a very powerful sensory uh, system. If it is attracted, then all Juspur attract. And if it is uh, other properties like halting, uh, stop the motility or even kill them uh, and show the repellent activity, you can see within a few minutes. And it is a very nice, simple bioassay method. And this bioassay guided method we used to discover, uh, you know, dozens of bioactive compounds. Uh, here you can see under the microscope how we can see swimming juice pool. Light microscope, you can see all the dots. And the, this is the particle uh, around 200 uh, micrometer in, in uh, size. And if you uh, drop into the particle, uh, uh, Float and if no compound, you see juice pool uh, 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 do not care uh, yes, yes. about its present. But yes. if the particle contain an attractant, here you see all the dots. Juice pool aggregate like a, a root tip. And uh, if uh, the compound is halting, juice pool motility halting, stop the motility. Here you can see all white dots are halting, but the far distance, uh, you can see the trace of juice pool uh, movement. So this is a fantastic, simple uh, device we use to discover many compounds. For example, in the root tip, you, you, when you uh, suspend a root tip in the juice pool suspension in a petri dish, uh, for example, this is a spinous root tip, you can see all the dots aggregated around the root tip. That means root tip release some of the compound. Now question was what is the specific compound that attract the juice pool uh, on the root surface and uh, allow juice pool to find the host. And it was our first target. Interestingly, by using uh, a series of chromatographic process using a 17 kilogram of uh, spinous root, we discovered the real uh, host specific compound uh, 
five hydroxy, six, seven methyl, methylene dioxy uh, flavone. You see very unique compound. Uh, the bearing is completely unsubstituted and very unique structure. And we then uh, elaborated our study to check whether the, uh, by, uh, this compound is present in all the host plant and all the non-host plant are uh, not producing this compound. And we confirm that coclefilling uh, is a genuine host specific uh, attractant of the host of uh, aphanomyces uh, cochloides and it is called chiromone because plant produces originally this compound for the protection but uh, over the years of evolutionary process co-evolutionary process pathogen smartly recognize this compound as a, a, a signaling cue to locate the host and now we ask the question, those who are attracted by the cochlefilling A, then how morphological transitions take in place, which are essential for the in infection. We asked first question whether cochlefilling A had any role. And interestingly, uh, cochlefilling A at, you see very low concentration, 10 to the power minus 10 molar concentration attract the juice pool. But when we used 10 to the power minus uh, eight molar concentration, we found that attracted juice pool all germinated. And even germ to show the uh, penetration. Here you see a particle by scanning electron micrograph, uh, it is fully covered by the germinated spore and germ tubes penetrated just like the root. That means cochlefilin A, when uh, the juice pore comes close to the particle, the, uh, due to gradient of the compound, uh, concentration is high. And at that concentration, it mimic like the root uh, tip, and then it trigger germination and trigger the different gene expression. So same compound uh, at lower concentration attractant, but at higher concentration uh, is uh, 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 triggering the uh, uh, morphological transition of the juice pool. And we then asked question, what is the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, receptor uh, that perceives the host signal from the, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, host signal uh, by the juice pool membrane? And by using many pharmacological uh, tools, including a, a G protein okay. activator, okay. Nestoperan, uh, we okay. confirm okay. that okay. juice pool perceives okay. host signal okay. by, down. Using, okay. by using, uh, you know, a G protein couple receptor. Okay. You know, 2012 uh, Nobel Prize winner uh, uh, discovered the G protein couple receptor. You know, um, for the more than 40 percent of our drug are mediated by the G protein couple receptor. And we also did some of the work to understand the uh, downstream signal signaling pathway by using you know phospholipid analysis uh, in the membrane. And uh, we uh, concluded that juice pool may perceive host signal by a G protein couple receptor, and then it is mediated by phospholipid. As D or phospholipase C uh, 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 and calcium act as a second messenger. So I am uh, making the story short. Uh, 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 I, we had another question: How this juice pool uh, dramatically, uh, uh, you know, change its morphology from juice pool to cystospore and then germinate? Uh, uh, by using any other big molecules like internal molecules. And uh, you know, every cell has cytoskeleton. Actin and tubulins are the two proteins that are considered as the cytoskeleton holding the structure of the cell. And we targeted the actin and tubulin, and we found that uh, cochlefilin A trigger uh, dynamic uh, polymerization. Here you can see in the juice pool, actin remains as, uh, you know, fine uh, filament, but in case of cystospore, it, uh, you know, polymerized and become the uh, platform. And when again germinate the hypha, it become the finest oil-like structure. That means host specific plant signal cochlefilin A triggers a dynamic polymerization and demolymerization of F actin in the pathogenic aphanomyces cochlearis juice pool. And these uh, fundamental uh, discoveries, uh, you know, allowed us to target the uh, juice pool phytopathogen for their man management. Some scientists already used our cochlefilling A and some other compounds uh, for uh, with the, uh, uh, you know, a, a fungicide uh, so that uh, juice pool attracted and then, uh, you know, uh, commit uh, 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 toxic uh, uh, substances and, uh, 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 you know, uh, then control. Uh, we had another question. Uh, if uh, host, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
plant produce cochlefering a like signaling compound then what happened in case of non host plants most of the plants are resistant to you know um, uh, uh, aphonomyces cochloides so we thought we hypothesized that chemical weapons some chemical weapons in the non host plant may ward off the peronosporomycetes we screened 200 non host plants from uh, 100 from the bangladeshi origin and another 100 from chinese herbal medicine and 400 back bacteria uh, and by, uh, then we screen by, uh, by using a you know, particle method and we found that 40% of the plant extract exhibited some kind of inhibitory activities against the juice pool, like repellent, stimulant, halting, or lytic activities. Uh, here are the some of the plants. And we one by one, we studied and discovered the uh, secondary metabolites there by using biogas as a guided method. I shall show you only one example. You are very familiar with this Amaranthus gangeticus lal shak, a very popular vegetable in our country. The, although it is belonging to the uh, amaranthesi, but this plant uh, completely resistant against uh, aphonomyces cochloides. Why? We extracted the root of uh, 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 red amaranth, and we found that uh, root of red amaranth attract the juice pool and then halt and do not allow to germinate. That means it stop the motility. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it is a very interesting phenomena, not killing the cell. And then we uh, used the, the bioassay guided fractionation, and we found two active principles. One is entrance for methyl uh, dopamine, and another one is nicotinamide. When we tested these two compounds, uh, entrans uh, for methyl dopamine attract the juice pool, but never allow to germinate. But in case of nicotinamide, it halt the juice pool. That if you combine both, you can find the activity just like the crude extract. And uh, here is the summary of our, you know, aphonomyces host and non-host uh, 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 interactions. Here you can see the uh, left side uh, in case of uh, cochlefilling a juice pour attract and then dif uh, morphologically uh, uh, differentiate into the uh, germ tube and then penetrate. In case of nicotinamide, juice pour uh, also attracted and formed the immature uh, cystospore, but this immature cystospore never germinate to produce the hyphal root tip. It again produce the juice pour and finally three after three cycle the banish and cannot infect the plant so this is the smart way here are some of the compounds we discovered uh, you know um, from the uh, uh, biosa method uh, from different plants and microorganisms so this is one part of our, my uh, you know talk uh, on our studies on the chemical ecology of uh, phytopathogenic peronosporomycetes second talk uh, uh, part is plant beneficial okay. interactions uses in crop production uh, please unmute please mute code please speak a channel mute uh, yes uh, beneficial microorganism uh, the concept is you know uh, uh, in an adult human uh, it has been uh, uh, confirmed by using human metagenome project led by the cambridge university every adult human carries 3 to 6 pounds of uh, microorganism uh, about 150 species diversities so in our intestine in our whole body different guards we carry lots of microorganism 3 to 6 pounds an analogy to this uh, you know uh, gut microbiome uh, in human, we thought that uh, plant also carry as eukaryote lots of uh, microbiome um, and they are beneficial, they are helpful for the immunity of the host. <laughs> and we call uh, plant uh, probiotics, uh, which are described as plant associated microorganisms that enhance the growth and protect host plant when applied in adequate amount. And they, those met, uh, you know, microorganism. If we can discover, we can use as biopesticide or bio fertilizer, or we can discover valuable drug compound uh, from them. And in our laboratory, uh, by uh, we, uh, uh, you know, isolated 700 plant probiotic bacteria, mostly epiphyte and endophyte, as well as rhizobacteria. And it is a you know uh, ambitious project called Mining Bangladesh Bio Gold because these are you know very expensive and 
future solution of uh, you know our uh, chemical based agriculture here you can see a root uh, 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 how different microorganisms in the rhizosphere they are playing a big role some of them are pathogenic obviously but most of them 99.9% they are beneficial and they exert beneficial activities uh, by various ways fix the nitrogen help uh, plants to sol uh, and solubilize the nutrients and produce different enzymes and uh, you know phytohormones and uh, promote the plant growth and uh, fitness of the plant uh, to get the uh, you know right uh, microorganism that is beneficial microorganisms first we uh, first, we targeted to uh, find some microorganisms that produce uh, um, metabolites uh, uh, to, uh, you know, disrupt the life cycle of the Aphanomyces cochloides. Uh, from the uh, sugar beet, sugar beet, you know, a host of Aphanomyces cochloides cause damping of serious damping of disease. We discovered one uh, bacterium, SBK88, from the root. And here you can see this is the bacterium, this is Aphanomyces cochloides, and it is clearly inhibiting the growth under microscope when we saw. Here you can see in control, here uh, the root is totally curled and cytoskeleton of the uh, hyphae is uh, totally disrupted and to understand the mechanism and uh, how, uh, you know, SBK88 uh, stop the growth of the mycelium as well as, you know, induce uh, um, uh, Carling Haifa, uh, we did some uh, experiment and bioassay guided, uh, you know, chromatographic separation of the active compound. And interestingly, this compound, a macrocyclic lactam antibiotic, we discovered. And this compound is very rare, only in the marine organisms, uh, this type of uh, uh, structure uh, or skeleton uh, being discovered, and it is a new compound. And this compound, uh, when we tested, uh, we found that it can and uh, act as a very uh, uh, important uh, peronum spurumicide. And in the field condition, both bacteria as well as this compound can uh, uh, work to control the disease like a tachigar and the commercial uh, fungicide. And we then uh, try to understand when we apply the live bacteria in the root uh, as uh, you know root colonization whether they colonize or not uh, in the practical field and we found that here you can see many plants we studied by using scanning electron micrograph and one funny thing is that bacteria uh, 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 colonized plant root perpendicularly standing on the root is was uncommon and we didn't see it. and finally uh, we uh, by using a transmission electron micrograph we found that bacteria co uh, contains fimbria at one pole and that helped them to colonize uh, on standing that is perpendicularly and perpendicular colonization help more bacteria to colonize on the surface and it is beneficial and even on the hyphal surface it colonized perpendicularly and uh, we uh, try to understand how this curling of the hypha, the hypha as well as hyper branching taken place uh, by analyzing the uh, cytoskeleton of the cell. And we found that the actin, uh, uh, the cytoskeleton actin is disrupted by the uh, macrocyclic lactam antibiotic. Uh, and this is why, uh, you know, uh, polar growth is disrupted, uh, even in the germination of the hypha also, uh, uh, juice also uh, disrupted. So so our study, we, we concluded that the lysobacter, that bacterium as BK88, we uh, confirmed by using 16S rRNA gene sequencing as lysobacter species, potential biocontrol bacterium, and uh, it suppressed damping of disease through combination of antibiosis and characteristic plant colonization in perpendicular fashion and macrocyclic lactam antibiotic actually uh, interrupts the homing events because it can stop the motility and disrupt the ultrastructure of the cycle cytoskeleton of uh, the uh, path, uh, you know, pathogen. And we then uh, searched uh, a new compound from uh, uh, in the streptomyces. You know, uh, Pro uh, Professor Satoshi Omura, few years ago, got the Nobel Prize for discovery of huge, uh, 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 you know, uh, 
natural products, including abermectin and uh, ivermectin. And uh, streptomyces is considered a hub of, uh, you know, bioactive compounds. And we found that one uh, isolate of streptomyces uh, can stop the motility of juice spore. And we found uh, the staurosporin and indolocarbazole antibiotic is involved there. And staurosporin actually discovered by uh, Satoshi Omura, who got the Nobel Prize in 1986. And it is a protein kinase uh, inhibitor, a broad spectrum inhibitor to understand and pinpoint what kind of protein kinase is involved in uh, halting the motility of juice food, we finally used many pharmacological as well as specific inhibitors and uh, uh, by using chelerethrin and many other compounds. We confirmed that motility of juice foods are inhibited by inhibitors of protein kinase C. Uh, and interestingly, the protein kinase C also inhibit the motility of human sperm. And it has been uh, established. And we published this data uh, in uh, molecular plant microbe interaction. And we found that not only uh, juice pool motility, even juice pool release production of juice pool is also inhibited by this compound. And when we applied these compounds uh, on the, uh, you know, um, a grapevine downy mildew caused by the plasma paraviticula and other oomycetes, we found that two micromolar concentration is enough to control the disease. And these, these are uh, some of the stories uh, from the uh, beneficial uh, uh, bacteria. Uh, we can discover the important new, uh, uh, you know, uh, drug uh, in agrochemically important uh, drug. And we found some other compounds from uh, streptomyces, like uh, you know, macro uh, tetrolytes that can also stop the motility of juice pool, which they can do. They can, uh, you know, activate the ATPase activity and completely lost the ATP in the juice pool because juice pool cannot take nutrient from the environment and it is the mechanism. We discovered some more compound by using bioassay guided fractionation, new compound like cacniamycin uh, uh, and bancromine uh, from the you know endophytic fungus and uh, obviously oligo oligomycin, pamamycin, uh, echinosporin uh, and also um, some new compounds from the bacillus subtilis in collaboration with uh, uh, processing in Korea, uh, gegeotetrins, uh, uh, new uh, peptides, and uh, they also show activity against the juice fungi, as well as the most devastating wheat blast fungus. Recently, we published this paper. And some other compounds, I am not going uh, details, uh, those we discovered by using bioassay guided fractionation. Now I am uh, going to start my uh, the part three, genomic analysis, not small molecule. We are now, uh, mm -hmm. I am now going to talk about the bigger molecule. Bigger molecule, uh, you know that in uh, 2016, Bangladesh experienced a devastating fungus called uh, uh, disease uh, wheat blast, which, which destroyed 15,000 hectares of wheat and ill loss was up to 100%. And uh, as a student of biotechnology, uh, I was uh, tempted to know what is the cause because in Asia, this type of disease have never been experienced. And our hypothesis was wheat blast in Bangladesh may be caused by a native blast fungus through host jump or mutation uh, from the local grasses or it may be imported from South America because South America uh, has been experiencing devastating wheat blast since 1985, but all other continents in the earth free from wheat blast. And we decided to use field pathogenomics. Uh, uh, that means apply directly genomic technology in the field of a developing country. It was an ambitious project because lots of scient uh, scientists, when I uh, shared this method through Twitter and Facebook, they joined with me. And we we analyzed, uh, collected the samples from the field and, uh, you know, extracted the RNA and RNA-seq analysis uh, resulted, you see, the wheat RNA, many other, uh, you know, organisms RNA, as well as the uh, uh, blue dots are the uh, fungal RNA. And by using Trinity software, we assembled and we analyzed and we found that Magnaporte or IZ, which is very closely related to the South American uh, wheat blast uh, fungus that, that is triticum uh, is uh, the cause of our uh, one. And 
At that time, in the gene bank, only one isolate was there, so we could not make a, a, a fine conclusion. This is why we shared all of data through an open wheat blast, and it was a, a, a you know a news in Nature as well as Weekly Science and scientists all over the world. They uh, joined and downloaded our raw data from the open wheat blast, and by using their uh, you know own expertise in genome evolution, uh, the biology, uh, we finally. Uh, in a concerted effort, discovered that uh, wheat blast in Bangladesh was caused by the South American lineage uh, of Magna Porte Orizi, and immediately we published the preprint in uh, within three months uh, in the uh, uh, Cold Spring Harbor Lab Bioarchive, and then uh, we published the uh, full paper within six months without any project money, and it was unprecedented by using open science, open data sharing, and international collaboration, engaging global scientific community a plant health emergency was, you know, within six months uh, we uh, figure out. And what was the uh, significance of this uh, work? Because when we know uh, it is came from South America, South America, they had 35 years experiences. So we uh, instructed our farmers and national take the uh, strategy. And that is why later years we didn't see any epidemic. Now the question is, why wheat blast came from South America to Bangladesh? Uh, and if it can be, you know, uh, moved to other major wheat growing uh, countries uh, because there are no specific diagnostic protocol. And this is why we decided to discover genome specific primers and using CRISPR Cas12 uh, technology, a rapid diagnostic tool as we are using in uh, for detecting the COVID-19. In collaboration with Professor Gu Liang Wang of Ohio State University, Chinese Academy of Science, we discovered two specific, uh, you know, uh, DNA segment in the uh, uh, Magna Porte or IG Titica wheat blast fungus. And based on these two, uh, you know, uh, uh, segment, we designed the primer and by using, uh, you know, um, uh, CRISPR Cas12 uh, Cas enzyme, we developed this PCRD strip. In case of COVID-19, you can see this PCRD strip has been uh, used. And uh, by using this strip, within 30 minutes, you can uh, uh, detect the wheat blast fungus either in the uh, grain or plant, or any uh, alternate host. And uh, we then signed a memorandum of understanding with OMC Healthcare, uh, who are specialists in diagnostic protocol, and they are now making it, uh, you know, very user-friendly as well as uh, uh, cheap. And next, uh, 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 you know, uh, study, uh, we uh, try to develop the blast resistance uh, Wheat. How can we do it? In case of Magna Porta or IG, you know, in plant pathogen interactions, there are uh, some plants are susceptible, some plants, uh, plants are resistant, and the mechanism is being uh, discovered because a uh, pathogen, when uh, you know, infect the plant, they release some uh, chemical weapons to uh, uh, collapse the immune system of the uh, host and uh, you know in compromised co uh, uh, compatible interaction uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, S genes called S genes uh, 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 that collaborate and fix the AVR uh, you know uh, uh, effector uh, that is toxic compounds from the pathogen and then compromised and disease is developed. But in case of uh, resistant interaction, uh, here you can see there are some NLR and other receptors which activate the hypersensitive reaction and tackle the disease. So based on this idea, we thought if we can uh, delete by using CRISPR-Cas technique the S genes, then we may get the uh, blast resistant uh, 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 wheat plant. Uh, and it has been, you know, the concept has been proved by Sufyan Kamaun and other researchers, uh, and uh, uh, which uh, uh, the method originally discovered by uh, Emmanuel and Jennifer, uh, the CRISPR Cas method in 2020, they got the Nobel. Nobel Prize. We then invited Sufyan, who first, uh, you know, used the CRISPR-Cas technology in plant uh, in our country, our university, and uh, Nick Talbot, a number one researcher in the world in uh, rice blast, and they trained us, and we then targeted 10 S genes, and we edited uh, 10 S genes, and we evaluated them, and we found them in the sibling stage, they are moderately tolerant, but in the heading stage, we are now, uh, you know, testing uh, them uh, 
because wheat blast is a head disease. And next uh, topic is biocontrol of wheat blast using endophytic probiotics. We checked our all 700 bacteria and found some of them are you know, antagonistic to wheat blast. And when we applied them in the field, here you can see the upper one control uh, in the Meherpur artificially uni inoculated, but the lower one protected by the, um, the some uh, bacterial uh, isolates. We originally isolated from the wheat grain. And here you can see very clearly it's disease free and here uh, disease one at the grain uh, filling stage. And we then used the genome analysis of the bacteria. And we found that bacteria produce diverse chemical arsenal to protect the uh, plant from the uh, uh, blast fungus. And also some of the genes we found that can induce systemic resistance uh, immunity of the wheat, uh, wheat plant. And uh, th this is uh, all about the uh, brief story of our work. And we did small scale experiment. We are now uh, thinking uh, to apply uh, this technology in collaboration with um, Russell IPM in UK uh, so that we can use this technology uh, as a formulation for uh, management of uh, wheat blast. Another uh, uh, work, last work I am uh, going to show you here, reduction of fertilizer use in rice probiotic bacteria and elucidation of molecular mechanism of rice bacterial interactions. This project was funded by uh, Bangladesh Academy of Science and USDA. And we first uh, tested our uh, you know, rice probiotic endophytes in the laboratory condition here. You can see in control and uh, other how they stimulate the growth. And when we tested in the field, uh, after a screening of, you know, large amount, we found Delphia and Parabarcholderia bacillus in the field condition. Half doses fertilizer here, you can see right hand side at the bottom, uh, half dose fertilizer, but here you see uh, full dose fertilizer, but with bacteria, the growth is like full doses fertilizer. And we found in the, uh, you know, uh, 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 in the farmer's field. And here you can see the yield. Yield is uh, with high half doses uh, with bacteria. Uh, 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 we found that yield is even higher than the full doses of fertilizer. Here is the control half doses of fertilizer. So we can say 50% of NPK fertilizer if we can make a commercial formulation uh, to apply these bacteria. And we also studied the molecular mechanism. They can fix nitrogen. They produce, uh, you know, different uh, phytohormones and different enzymes uh, to promote the uh, growth. They also induce uh, uh, the gene expression of the host for the growth uh, related, uh, uh, you know, uh, products. And here is another application of probiotic bacteria in strawberry. Uh, when we applied probiotic bacteria, bacillus and parabarcholderia, we found not only, you know, yield increase, no need to apply uh, any uh, fungicide. I collaborated this project with uh, uh, Professor Mahfuzur Rahman, who is attending uh, today and USDA Foreign Assistance Service funded this project and we found that phenolic constituents, antioxidants, tremendously increased in the plant. And this is uh, all about the, you know, uh, plant microbe interactions. And now I would like to briefly show one interesting uh, uh, study as I am very much curious researcher on host microbe interactions in case of SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19. We analyzed a large number of human nasopharyngeal, you know, uh, uh, nasopharyngeal uh, uh, cavity is the entry point of the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus. And uh, uh, in collaboration with Bangladesh um, uh, uh, BCSIRC, uh, we uh, analyzed the sample from the COVID patient uh, recovered and when they recovered as well as the healthy human to see the microbial diversity uh, in the nasopharyngeal cap cavity uh, and how they are changes. We found that SARS-CoV infection reduces human nasopharyngeal commensal microbiome with inclusion of pathobiomes. And uh, this is another study uh, in case of uh, uh, rice probiotic, uh, we found that when we apply the probiotic, they also modulate the uh, other uh, microorganisms in the root. And here is the, as I mentioned, uh, interesting point is here you can see, uh, I, I'm uh, at the last slide almost, um, in healthy patient of Bangladeshi, they contain, you know, huge virus, 84% virus in our nasal cavity is the cor uh, coronavirus, beta coronavirus, not SARS-CoV-2. And this may be one of the clue that Bangladeshi uh, people are uh, less prone to uh, COVID-19. And the details you can uh, find in the paper published in scientific reports uh, uh, last year 
and uh, we are now uh, studying the gene expression profiling in the epithelial cell of the nasal cavity when first uh, our human cell encountered the COVID-19. And we found that many uh, uh, genes uh, uh, regulating different pathway uh, with different organ, they are uber expressed and this uh, study is not yet conclusive. And uh, uh, I'm very fortunate that in last 10 years, I received a tremendous fund from uh, different donors, including Bangladesh Academy of Science. These are two new machines, Illumina sequencing platform, a smart machine, and we recently completed the jackfruit genome sequencing oh, okay. machine. And uh, this is the last. Uh, I'm very much thankful to numerous people uh, who are collaborating with me, my team members, my students, postdocs, and international collaborators, lots of donors, and also member of the uh, Academy of Science uh, who always encouraging me. Uh, finally, I would like to uh, mention one name, Professor no uh, Naeem Choudhury, late professor. He uh, nominated me to be a, a fellow of this uh, uh, academy. So I uh, 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 show uh, highest honor uh, to his, you know, uh, memory to this academy who led this academy very much, and thank you very much for my team from my team.